I suppose we'll dive right into it in terms of the impressive list of personnel that you worked alongside. I mean, obviously I've come to know you more through your work with Ronaldo now via Gillen Balagay. And one thing that stood out to me when I recently interviewed Gillen um, on his biography of Ronaldo, I asked him the question, who was the most informative kind of uh, source that you spoke to when you were learning about Cristiano and gathering your information? And he pinpointed himself as someone that he learned a lot about Cristiano and he was intrigued by the relationship you managed to cultivate with him. Uh, what was it that was so sort of special? I mean, we all know the player he's gone on to be and physically what he's gone on to be as well, but what could you just explain to us the relationship with Cristiano and how you helped develop him? Well, the, the relationship with him actually was the development of the relationships with players at the club. Yeah. Obviously, I first went in and trained with the youth team. Yeah. And then I was asked to train Roy Keane. Now, you know, I'd, I'd never trained top-line players, you know, somebody in the, you know, like of Roy. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was asked to train him. I was asked to help in his um, re rehabilitation with Rob Swire. Yeah. And so I, I had an interview with him um, before I would train him um, to, to make sure I knew what he'd been doing and what he was hoping to do and what he thought of different types of training. Yeah. And he actually told me that he used to box. And of course, I had, a, I had a boxing club at my gym. Right. I'd had it for 14 years. So I said, oh, fantastic. You know, so you, would you fancy using some boxing techniques that I've actually developed for football? He said, yeah. So we went down into the gym when it was appropriate, of course, during his rehab. Yeah. And we did some boxing training. And of course, whenever Roy's in the gym, everybody wants to be there. You know, so players were coming in and watching him, and he, he looked magnificent when he's boxing. On the pants, uh, yeah, so exactly. It's actually yeah. Work yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're not talking about getting in a ring and punching each other. No, exactly. <laughs> so, but they could see the relevance that I was working with Roy. How that would be used in football, and yeah. so the likes of Wes Brown and Gary Neville and and then Oli Gunnar and people like that. They all had a look at it and say, "Oh, I want to have a go." And then I introduced the weightlifting and some strength training. And it just really built up and I got a really good feeling in the gym. I was always in the gym. That was a, one of the most important things for me. And same as it is here. Yeah. I've always got my chair in the gym. Yeah. This tendency to have offices and all the rest of it is fantastic. But if you want to really learn about people, yeah. you need to be in the gym because they don't only come during a specific training session. Yeah. They'll come and see you when they feel that they're lacking on something that they need to work on on their own. Yeah. Or even sometimes, if you build up good relationships, they'll tell you about their private lives, which you've got to be very careful with. Of course, yeah. So obviously they knew my lads, um, they knew of what was going on in the family. <clears throat> and so I would get them, virtually all of them, coming to me on their own and talking about their own specific needs. And of course what that did, <laughs> you know, Yap Stam and, <laughs> you know, Andy Cole... Dwight, you know, he, this goes on and on, the list of players. Yeah. And then, of course, Cristiano comes in. So Cristiano was very easy to work with. You know, I, I had all this evidence, if you like, that people look for, well, he's trained him and he's not doing so bad. Ryan Giggs with all this hamstring problems and all the rest of it. So, yeah. so um, when Cristiano came along, I mean, obviously, he was bought for a lot of money. I'd seen him at that game in Portugal and yeah. uh, realised what a talent he was. But it, I don't go to other people. They've got to come to me. Yeah. And he came to me and asked me about what I could do for him. And I said to him, you need to watch the players that you think are worthwhile watching and see what they've done. And he did. He look, looked at what everybody was doing. And then he said, well, I want that, but I want more as well, because I want to be specific for me. Yeah. So I started to work with him. It was very easy, because I'm a dad. I've got five kids. You know, I worked in schools and colleges and all the rest of it. So me getting on with people yeah. was quite easy. Yeah. And so we, we formed a great relationship, because you've got to learn when to shut up keep out of the way of it or when you need to inter intercede and, and say something or try to help yeah. but you've got to be careful in relationships and, and that's one of the skills of being a coach that isn't really worked on for people coming out of universities and colleges and all that you know yeah. it's a real skill and an art uh, art, uh, coaching to me is an art yeah. it's not just about knowing if you exercise and oh this is better than that yeah. oh that's very rarely true anyway it depends where you put exercise but it's the, it's the mental side of it you know emotional side of uh, working with people that's so important to interact with 